Okay, on this one, um, uh, just I'm going to really quickly create some toolpath here. Uh, and what I really want to get to is these holes here. Uh, so I'm going to open tools in CAM and I am going to uh, load a saved process just to save a few seconds. I'm going to go to pocketing and I'm just going to grab a routine that goes three quarters of an inch deep. Wow, that's taking a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, turn off the, uh, turning off the, I don't know why that keeps turning on. It's, my computer's acting weird with the video recording. Uh, okay, so, uh, we pocketed that, uh, uh yeah, I got that. Okay, uh, I'm going to open these back up. And I'm going to go inch 20 thousandths deep, cutting to the outside. And I'm going to finish it inch 20 thousandths deep. And I'm going to cut this and say do it. And I'm going to change that to offset from part trimmed material. All right, so what we've got right now is this. All right, now what I want to do is I want to focus on the holes here. So uh, these holes are quarter inch diameter. Um, so I'm going to create a spot drill, 90 degree, two flute. And I'll go ahead, since I noticed this, we'll have to make this carbide. And then I'm gonna create a drill Uh, sorry, uh, lost some train of thought there. Uh, I'm going to click in the diameter field and Alt-click on that circle to pick up the circle diameter. And I'm going to bring my spot drill down and I'm going to do holes with that. Now, let's, let's think about this. Uh, I'm going to feed in, wrap it out. Speeds and feeds, again, I'm not paying any attention to. But this thing is first going to encounter material at the bottom of this pocket, which is three quarter D. Now my drill cycle begins here, and I don't want to feed from a hundred thousandths up to however deep I'm going. So let's wrap it to six fifty D, hundred thousandths above that floor, and then let's uh, create at the end of the operation. I'll let it go to a hundred thousandths. And uh, I'm going to do a diameter measured at three quarter D of 0.275. And then I'm going to take my drill, and it's only going through a quarter inch, so I'm just going to let it feed in, wrap it out. I'm going to leave my wrap it down and top of the part value set there, and I'm going to go full diameter all the way through this thing. And again round that off to an inch 95 and I'm going to do this hole, this hole, this hole, and that hole in that order and I'm going to say do it. Alright, so I've got my tool path. Now, uh, I'm about to crash the living daylights out of this thing. So, let's watch this go. There's the tool. And, hang on, these are set to reverse order. I can leave that one on the short. Let's redo those. Alright, so here's the first hole, and it's doing it, and then hitting there, and then here it's going to just demolish it. Yeah. And then here it's going to just demolish it. Okay. So, you know, I don't want my clearance plane, you know, I don't want this value being above the part because then it's going to, you know, the drill cycle is going to start here. Uh, so what I want to do is the transition between holes, I want it to go to the part clearance rather than the R level because the R level is buried down in the part. And I'm going to do the same thing with the drill. We're going to clear between, we're going to make the transition between holes at the part clearance rather than 
um, rather than the um, R level. Now I had clicked off of these, so I'm going to one click on each of these holding the control key down for the second one so that I don't reset this because I just broke my own rule. Uh, I didn't double click this before I made the changes. Uh, but this will allow me to redo those without having to redo the work of, of changing the values. Alright, and here we go. And so we're, we're coming up and clearing safely. Let me run that again. Uh, show you one more thing. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about everything down to the first drilling operation here, which is operation 15. So I want to be able to, I, you know, I don't want to have to go slowly through here, but I want to be able to look at operation 15 to 16. So I'm going to come over here in my Opsim uh, control dialog and go to this first button here, which is stops. And I can set stops for the rendering. Uh, if you see a green stop sign, there's no stop set. If you see a yellow stop sign, there's a stop sign or a stop set, but it's, you haven't reached it yet. And if there's a red stop sign, then you've reached the stop. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to say I want to stop before running operation number 15. All right, that allows me to slide the speed control all the way over and just blow through the first part of this. And then it's going to stop before 15, and then I can watch that more slowly. I can slow it down, or I can single block through it and check that toolpath a little more closely. Okay, so uh, just another control there. Uh, and let me remind you that uh, I mentioned it a couple of times, but didn't really make a point out of it. This button here is very handy. If I select that, any unselected operations will not be rendered. Uh, now it doesn't, doesn't show you that machining or the condition of the part at that point either. So again, this is going to appear to crash the, the Dickens out of this. But, uh, but you can, you can, that way you can look at specific tool paths and only those tool paths. There's some other things you can do. Uh, uh, you can start at a specific operation um, number, and then uh, it will run the rendering one time up to that point, and then start every. Well, let's let's just do that. Let's say we're going to start at operation 15. So uh, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to say start at operation 15. All right, and then it runs the rendering to give me a very rough uh, stock outline. But this way, I can actually watch 15 running without it burying itself into a block. And and there's you know a lot of other nice controls that we have here. Uh, I can also come right click on the blue tile bar, come down to settings. I can specify the behavior that I want it to have when it detects a collision. Uh, and uh, also I can set my tolerances for the cut part. So if I turn this off and I set this to say 15 thousandths instead of a thousandths and a half, then my rendering happens very quickly but it's also very faceted. Uh, or I could come in here and set those to a tenth and a half, and my rendering is going to be slower, but it's going to be much, much more accurate. So these these art moves here appear much smoother, even than at a thousandths and a half. But a thousandths and a half is, you know, kind of a good default uh, value. Uh, but on larger parts, uh, with a lot of toolpath, you may make that coarser. You might drop that back to two or three or four, even five thousandths on very large parts, uh, so that they render quickly. On very small parts with a lot of detail, you may make that a tenth and a half or a couple of tenths. 
Uh, so that that's a number that you will change occasionally as as you um, as you right work. Click in the blue. Yeah, I'm right clicking on the blue title bar of the render control and coming down to settings. Then there's some other stuff you can do here as well. Uh, notice that I have this set to show op number. So the num what I'm seeing, the value that I'm seeing in this window here is the operation number that's currently running. Okay, uh, but alternately I can have it show me the time. And this is the run time at that point of the program. Now this is only in the feed cutting time. You know, it's just a mathematical calculation based on the distance the tool has to go and the feed rate that it's moving at. Uh, but it does give you a, a an approximation of a cycle time. You just you would add a little bit to this for tool changes. You know, you know, you can look to see how many tool changes you have. Another thing that I used to do a lot is select all of my tool paths. So I just click on one of these, hit Control A, and then redraw the screen, kind of get a feel for how much, how many rapid moves there are. Uh, this has got a fair bit, so depending on my machine, I might add, you know, 30 seconds or, or 45 seconds to that cycle time in my estimate. Plus, you know, I used to have, I think I allowed seven, uh, seven seconds per, uh, uh, per tool. Uh, for tool changes, so I could hit pretty close to an actual cycle time by, by you know, adding a, a cheap value for you know per tool, and then just estimating the rapids. And like I said here, I'd probably add 30 or 45 seconds of cycle time because there's quite a bit of, of rapid motion there. All right, go ahead, uh, if you would, and just pocket this out. I don't care about the outside. Pocket this out and do these holes and make sure that you're clearing correctly uh, between holes.